Sometimes I feel like a motherless child. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child. A long way is from home. A long way is from home. Come, my brother. Sometimes I feel like I'm almost gone. Sometimes I feel like I'm almost gone. Sometimes I feel like I'm almost gone. That's the old man I don't like to be. What does he care if the world's got troubles? What does he care if the land ain't free? It has been said that greatness should not be measured by what one accomplishes, but by the obstacles one must overcome along the way. By that standard, there can be no greater man of accomplishment than Paul Robeson. Every time I feel the spirit Born April 9, 1898, Paul Robeson, prodigious athlete, fiery orator, intellectual powerhouse, and high school valedictorian, attended Rutgers University. Phi Beta Kappa his junior year, valedictorian his senior, he wrote his senior thesis on how the 14th Amendment could assure African-American equality 35 years before the Supreme Court took a similar position. He paid for college playing professional football and performing in the theater where his voice was discovered. He was the third African-American to attend Columbia Law School. He graduated but quit a legal position when a secretary refused to take dictation from him. About this time, he met Eslyn Cordoso Good, a Renaissance woman who had studied at Columbia University. They married in 1921, and soon thereafter, Essie Robeson took on the role of manager of her husband's career. His career took him instead to theaters and concert halls. Robeson performed the first full-length recital of African-American spirituals in 1925 and through the 1930s built an international reputation for his concerts. Daniel, deliver Daniel, did my Lord deliver Daniel and why not? Jerome Kern wrote Showboat's Old Man River, especially for Robeson, 
and through roles in movies like Showboat, The Emperor Jones, and The Proud Valley, Paul Robeson brought the first serious portrayals of African Americans to film. The first black actor to portray Shakespeare's Othello with a white cast, Robeson appeared in a 1931 London production and in a record-breaking 1940 Broadway run. Through travel to the Soviet Union in 1934, where he was deeply impressed with the lack of racism he felt, and to Spain in 1937, where he sang for forces fighting Franco's fascism, he became politically aware. We who labor in the art, we who are singers, we who are actors, we who are artists, we must remember that we come from the people, our strength comes from the people, and we must serve the people and be a part of them. Recognized throughout the world for his support of civil rights, Robeson headed an organization challenging President Truman to support an anti-lynching law and co-founded the Progressive Party. Robeson spoke out against oppression at every opportunity, regardless of the consequences. And for Robeson, those consequences were heavy, costing him his passport, his freedom to travel, and effectively, his career. Through the 1940s, his songs and his concerts became increasingly politicized. Joe Hill became a staple of his repertoire. And in time, the lyrics to Old Man River evolved from a lament into a song of strength. I keep laughing instead of crying. I must keep fighting until I'm dying. And Old Man River, he'll just keep At 1949's World Peace Conference in Paris, Robeson decried African-American participation in foreign wars and a government that would treat them as second-class citizens. When he returned to America, rioting broke out at concerts in Peekskill, New York. Anti-communists and racists threw stones and attacked audience members while police turned a blind eye. From then on, a fear of violence surrounded Robeson's appearances and political terror was used against him. In the 40s, he'd been among the top concert artists in the world, his 1947 income reportedly exceeding $100,000. By 1952, however, that figure had plummeted to $6,000 as he found himself under constant FBI surveillance with his concerts canceled, his records pulled from store shelves, and himself blacklisted from performing for major concert halls, television, and radio. Called before the House Un-American Activities Committee, he was asked, why do you not stay in Russia? He responded, because my father was a slave, and my people died to build this country, and I'm going to stay here and have a part of it just like you, and no fascist-minded people will drive me from it. Is that clear? Robeson's passport was revoked, denying him all foreign travel and income from foreign performances, even in Canada. But Paul Robeson would not be silenced. He continued to perform whenever and wherever he could, most often for unions or churches. In 1952 and 1953, Canadian union leaders assisted Robeson in defying the American government's attempts to suppress him by organizing concerts at Peace Arch Park. At the 1953 concert, as in many places that he traveled, Robeson spoke of his political views and the link between those and his song. The blacklist lifted in 1958, and Robeson made a triumphant return to the stage in a sold-out Carnegie Hall concert. With his passport reinstated, he left America to perform again as Othello at Stratford-upon-Avon's Shakespeare Festival. Illness forced his return to America in 1963. Thereafter, he rarely made public appearances and never again realized the public acclaim he once held. Paul Robeson passed away 
on January 23, 1976. We honor him not only for his countless and varied achievements as a performing artist, forerunner of the civil rights movement and political force, but for his passion, courage, and personal sacrifice with which he earned them. His legacy as a great and visionary American shall live on.